I had gotten cast in my first Broadway tour, and so my whole group, they all came to South Africa. Oh, brings tears to my eyes, and I didn't get to go. So this is your first time in South Africa? Oh, welcome home, man. You're emotional. It's yeah. okay. And it's raining. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So finally, I'm here. Yeah, welcome. Thank welcome. you. This is The Hustler's Corner. Ula, Yamidu, B. Aene. Ula, Aene. That is my latest song, Marua Pula. It is out there. It talks about rain. This is the first time in my life being outdoor and recording a podcast in the rain. <laughs> it just shows you that the person I'm about to interview, the gods or the ancestors, Abba Panti, are welcoming her back home. Ladies and gents, welcome to the Hustlers Corner, another exciting episode with uh, an incredible person, an incredible friend of mine. I've learned so much from her, and I'm quite excited that right now she's visiting the country in South Africa, and there's lots to talk about. But before we continue, first up, as tradition, we go straight to that chap chap sign on the count of three. We click those like buttons. One, two, three, let's go. Click, 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 click it. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Now let's go to the other side on the, subscri the subscription button. Click. Guys, don't forget to switch on the um, notification bell so you know every time we've got videos. Saikon, how are you doing? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for um, making it in the rain. Yes. You know, I'm so happy to be here in South Africa. I'm so happy to see South African sun, South African wind, South African rain, every type of piece of atmosphere. I love it. I'm so happy. So ladies and gents, the queen that I'm sitting with here is an award-winning actress with a gift for dramatic storytelling and soaring vocal prowess. She's from ATL, Atlanta. She's an Atlanta native known for her incredible breath and versatility, both as an actress and as a singer. And she has had an exciting year with Temple Projects. She's had an exciting career actually with, ten, with many projects, big screen, small screen, film, movie, theater. And she currently stars in the ABC reboot of the classic 98, 1980s film, uh, family comedy the Wonder Years, from executive producers Saladin Pedersen, Fred Savage, and Lee Daniels. She plays Lillian Williams, the sharp and confident mother, to the young and protagonist Dean, narrated by Don Cheadle. She was also recently seen in the Emma Franklin sister to Aretha Franklin in the biopic Respect, starring Jennifer Hudson. Last year, she brought drama to the primetime television as Leah Davis in Craig Wright's Delilah on OWN Network, executive produced by dear Oprah Winfrey. She was also seen as Jules, a tough and no-nonsense homicide detective in the CW series In the Dark and recurred as FBI director and Angela Webster opposite Kerry Washington in ABC Shonda Rhimes drama Scandal. Do you guys know that um, Scandal in America and South Africa is called the fixer. <laughs> you are aware of that? Yes, yeah, yeah. A lot uh, of people, I ran into a few people here that said, the fixer. They knew me from the fixer. So. Yeah, yeah. And having started a career on stage, she has since appeared in nearly a dozen Broadway productions. She starred opposite Lupita Nyong'o in award winning playwright Danai Gurira's Eclipsed, earning her a Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Play. She also earned an Obie Award and a Tony Award nomination. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. You're a Tony, Tony nominee. Yes, yes. That's big. Yes. You know that's big, right? <laughs> yes. Additional Broadway credits include Ken Leon directed Tupac musical, Holla If You Hear Me, mm -hmm. the Tony Award nominated Motown the Musical, and hugely popular Afri Afrobeat musical, Fela. Were you also on Fela? Yes, Fela O. Oh, wow. <laughs> and all of those shows were Grammy-nominated soundtracks mm. for those we sang. I sang on those those soundtracks as Jesus. well. You're just so colorful. You're yes. so, you're so, what do they call it? Decorated. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, on Fela, she was a lover of, one and, of the mm. one and only Fela Kuti. The show traveled to Kuti's birthplace in Nigeria. Some of you guys may have heard about it. 
Um, it was, I think, it was, it was on Broadway. I checked it out. I got, well, I was blessed enough to check it out. Uh, I think they said it was produced. You saw in the blood as well. I yeah, in the blood. Broadway. I yeah. saw that as well. Yeah. 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 Um, talking about Fell, I think it was produced by Will Smith and Jay-Z, right? Uh, Will Smith, Jay-Z, and Jada Pinkett Smith, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways, by the way, guys, she also sings lead <laughs> vocals on the Grammy-nominated soundtracks for Motown, the musical yes. Fella, and the Broadway revival Hair. She also holds distinction of being the first black woman to perform in the role El Faba in Wicked on yeah. Broadway. Mm -hmm. She's off Broadway performances include Atlantic Theatre Company's The Secret Life of Bees, Signature Theatre's revival of Susan Laurie Park's In the Blood, you, um, uh, also Katori Hall's Hurt Village. On the West Coast, she starred alongside Wayne Brady in Stephen Sodim's Merrily We Roll Along, mm -hmm. under the direction of Tony Award nominee Michael Arden. She toured the US and Japan as the seductive Mimi Marquise or Marquez in Rent. Yes. She continues to use her platform and talents to help raise awareness for causes, organizations that support the growth in, uh, of Liberia. She sits on the board of Monrovia Football Academy. She's uh, uh, the first school in Liberia to combine formal education with professional soccer development. She's an entrepreneur, she's a philanthropist and an all-round incredible person. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome, Seikon Semblo. Thank you. So you say that was an introduction. Whoa! Yeah, you, you've done some work. <laughs> How yes. does it feel when they introduce you and, and 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 they read up a whole long thing? How do you feel? I never hear hear the whole thing like that. It's it's um it's surreal. It's surreal because I feel like I'm still just getting started. Yeah. And I've been I've been performing since I was a kid, since I was a teenager. I've been singing, acting, dancing, doing a little bit of modeling, uh, voiceover, a little bit of everything. And, and it just, I always feel like I'm just getting started. I, I always feel like I'm getting started too with my yeah. career. I mean, a lot of the things that I've done, it's only when they introduce you to a place where you're like, wow, I've done all of that, you know? But uh, you've got such an interesting career. I want to start from the beginning, like just um, your upbringing, where you're from, um, where did you grow up and just you know your education and how did you get introduced into the arts? Oh man, I, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, that's where I was born. My mom is from Atlanta. My dad was from Liberia, Monrovia um, in uh, West Africa. And I, I grew up in, uh, you know, it was nice to have a multicultural household, to have different types of foods, African foods, American foods. Um, African music, American music, uh, music was just always a part of me. I always just loved to sing and dance and, and rap. Um, and when I was in, uh, like, I guess grade school, we call it like elementary school, I always loved Janet Jackson. <laughs> and so I would like try to sing her songs and, you know, do her dances and all that stuff. And, um, and I liked rapping and I just always loved I loved uh, performing, and I never thought of it as something that I could not do. I, I was like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like a pop star when I grow up. That's what I thought. And then um, I remember the first time we got a VCR, and uh, my stepdad at the time he had a, uh, we had this one VHS cassette, and it was a, a movie with uh, the Italian actress Sophia Loren on the yeah. movie, and. I saw that movie, I was maybe like 10 years old, and I saw that movie, and she's like running through the hills of Italy and like, you know, with this beautiful eyeliner and this hair, and, and I was like, I wanna do that. And that's when the acting bug bit me. That's when it really bit me, and I was like, okay, I think I wanna really, really do this. So my mom, she had me in piano lessons, I was taking uh, dance classes, tap, ballet, you know, all the stuff that, that people, um, that young, young kids take, cheerleading, all of that. Uh, but I would say I didn't really seriously start acting until I got into high school. And that's when I met uh, Freddie Hendrix, who was um, the artistic director of the Freddie Hendrix Youth Ensemble of Atlanta. And alongside the managing director, Debbie Barber, and the choreographer, Charles Bullock, we did these amazing shows. I had a chance to do 
shows that had very important topics. One of the shows that we did, it was one of my first um, shows, like where I was seriously focused as an actress and as a singer, was a show that we did. It was called Soweto Soweto, A Township is Calling. Um, in this show, we learned um, about the 1976 riots here in South Africa, and we just, as young kids, we were so passionate um, about lear learning about uh, some form of African heritage and also um, having an understanding of the struggles of the people, the black people in South Africa. Growing up in Atlanta, it was, as we call it, Martin Luther King town. That's Martin Luther King country. SNCC country, SCLC country. Um, the, the place where a lot of the civil rights movement in America was, was homed was in Atlanta, Georgia. So we just, we were all very passionate uh, kids. And so incidentally, um, by the time the group got a chance to come to South Africa, I had gotten cast in my first Broadway tour, and so my whole group, they all came to South Africa. Oh, brings tears to my eyes, and I didn't get to go. So this is your first time in South Africa? Oh, welcome home, man. You're emotional. It's yeah. okay. And it's raining. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So finally, I'm here. Yeah, welcome. Thank welcome. you. And you're crying because <laughs> you can, I think your subconscious mind is sort of um, tapping into some of the knowledge that you might have heard or our history that yes. you know about yes. and that you were introduced to at that time. Yes. And what is that history? Share with us that story. Oh my gosh. I remember we had, um, we sing Hector Peterson. Hector Peterson, strong spiritually. What did he die for? Better education. We would sing all this. We were just learning, you know, and, you know, I really think that's when I got the understanding that we are in a, a diaspora, a diaspora of black people. Like we can't separate ourselves, you know, we felt a, a kinship um, and an understanding. And before I'd even been in that group, you know, like I think like 88, I remember when, when um, some of the, the corporations in Atlanta, I think Coca-Cola, they were divesting from, you know, supporting uh, companies that supported apartheid and so to see it break down to see Nelson Mandela come from prison to see him go on to become the president you know we sang Roli Slasa Mandela we used to sing Roli Slasa Mandela freedom is in your hand we used to sing and like like so whenever I would meet people from South Africa I, I would tell them about my appreciation. Also, growing up in Atlanta, and anybody from the ATL knows, every fall before school starts, they play Shaka Zulu on TBS. Oh, so they play Shaka Zulu for you guys as well? Yes. Boom, 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 yes. We are growing, growing higher and higher. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. Every fall, we all would watch Shaka Zulu and then go back to school every day because it's a mini series. We gonna watch like like an hour each night. They would play like you know, and we would all go back to school and we'd be reenacting the scenes and everybody would be like, "I'm Nandi, no, I am Shaka." Like we would be <laughs> like like I'm telling you, like there was a an imprint that South African uh, just energy and music. My mom took me to see Paul Simon. He did um, the Graceland yeah, album. Yeah, the Graceland album. Yeah, with Lady Smith. Smith Black like Mombasa. Yeah, yeah, like there was always some type of, you know, South African influence that was coming into our lives, you know, in Atlanta. Um, and so, so now that's why I get teary eyed because I finally made it and I had to, I came on my own. I didn't get to come with my crew. Some, some people in my crew, they had a big party last night and they were on a text yeah. and, and um, they were just like, hey, like, cause I finally got to come, you know, yeah. I didn't, I didn't come with them. But I've been to several other countries in Africa. Of course, uh, my dad's home country of Liberia. And a lot of Liberian people are very proud of me and proud of the work that I do. As well, of course, as Americans. Um, I spent so much time in New York City. New York City is where I really um, got my hustle 
I think that's where we met, right? On, yes, York, we met in New York City, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. And you saw me at that time I was doing that play called uh, In the Blood, which was a straight play, no singing. In New York I was known mostly um, as a musical theater actress, so I was known for my singing, like really heavily known for my singing. And I had to take um, I had to take a decision. I wanted to get more into the acting, get more respect as an actress. So I had to turn away some some of these singing opportunities and start focusing on serious acting. And uh, this is something that I always advise people. You know, when you make a pivot like that, um, you may lose money. You may um, people may not understand why you're doing what you do. But there's always a purpose. And I remember when I was doing that play that you came to see me in, I was on the front cover of the arts section of the New York Times, but I could not afford to pay my rent because of the, the uh, levels and the tiers of theater. It was a very small theater, but a very highly respected theater that I was playing at. And so sometimes you take these chances, you, you, sometimes you make a few steps back in order to make steps forward, you know? And I did that several times in a row, which eventually led to me having a Tony Award nomination. That is so incredible. You know, when you are talking about um, the Shaga Zulu story, yes. I think of those images, I think of us being kids, us emulating. What you guys used to do there, emulating what you used to oh, see yeah, Shaga Zulu. Yeah. We used Shaga, to do the same. He, he broke his, he his broke spear. He broke his spear like that. <laughs> and he, he preferred a shorter spear. Yes! <laughs> and, the interesting thing now that uh, as I'm getting older and I'm just observing the world, for me that was the image of Shaga and may so rest in peace Baba Henry because that image and the way you in which you portrayed that sh that character mm -hmm. till today for me when I think Shaga Zulu I think Baba Henry uh, Yes. You know? Now I say his name. Henry, yes. yeah, yeah. uh, and it's in the middle of the tongue and the, the top Kayele. of the, Kayele. Kayele. It's, it's softer. So there's Kayele. three clicks. Kayele. So there's a C. I've been trying to work on my clicks. So the there's a C places. click, which is in between, just in the middle of the mouth, on top of the tongue. Kayele. 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 Yeah. Kayele. 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 It's softer. Kayele. And there's the second click is the Q. Rosa. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. That's no. not the one. Oh, that's okay. the third one. Oh, okay, okay. That's the X. Oh, okay. Rosa. Rosa. That's on the side. Rosa. Okay. Rosa. Rosa. Yes. And then this, the, uh, the middle, the other one is? Is, is Kele. So Kele is soft. Kele, Kele. is a C. Kele. And then, ah, 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 that's the X. Rosa. And then when you put an H, it's Rosa. <laughs> Rosa. Ooh, I gotta some, work on those. I gotta we'll work give on some, it. Yeah. Some Zulu and Kosa lessons, but just to yeah. drive to the point quickly, the image of a black man at the time, that was the image of a black man at the time. Strength, strong, bold. Leadership. Leadership, mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What, what, what do you, maybe, maybe, maybe let, let's not get into that conversation now deeper, but I, I, so much has changed as we've grown up. As to right now, I kind of feel... We don't necessarily see those images in the same way. Thank you, anymore, even on screen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, at the time in the States, uh, Michael Jordan, I believe, was also very popular. So I, in my head, I was like, I just saw those two very strong, um, virile men, you know? Um, I think... You know, this is something that's very interesting when it comes to, um, I mean, we haven't even gotten into the, the show that I'm doing now, The Wonder Years. Um, but people get really excited because they see a, a very strong um, family and a very strong family unit that is focused on uh, creativity, leadership, uh, community, growth. Love. Uh, Love, selflessness. Yes, yeah, selflessness, home and hearth. And I think that's what's been missing. There's been, you know, look, there's, we, we love to party. We love to have fun. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of um, <laughs> debauchery. There's a lot of stuff that's available on television and, and in the movies. Um, but just to show that strength, that strength part, I think, is definitely missing. We don't see as much strength as we used to at you're, all you are so correct and also exactly what you're saying 
the black family unit. We also don't see that anymore. Yes. Do you think there is an intentional, deliberate agenda to make that happen? Sometimes I think there, I think there is. I mean, it's most people are very. Let me say this. This is the thing. I, 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 I knew generally when I was when I was growing up. I generally knew that people can be um, purposeful and focused. But now in my adulthood, after living so many years in New York, after traveling and going to so many different places in the world, I realized how intentional and unintentional some people can be. And I think people who are very intentional can play off of the fact that other people are unintentional. People can play off of the fact that if you don't choose to direct how you want to live your life, your life will be lived for you. Like your life will be People will take you and, and use you for their own purposes if you don't, you know, guide yourself and focus yourself and get really purposeful. And that comes down to, you know, just deciding what you're going to do the night before in terms of what you can do the next day, you know. Um, and I have become extremely intentional in the last couple of years, I've, I, especially with the pivot that I made. Um, after being very successful in the Broadway realm and wanting to break more into television and film, it's not an overnight success. I had to become very intentional. And so what I'm seeing, just bringing it back to your question, is, is there was a time where there was a lot of different types of music artists, a lot of types of hip hop, a lot of types of R&B, a lot of types of soul, a lot of different you know, things that were playing on the radio that were on the air. But then there was a time where it seemed like it just, there was a strong shift and it seemed like the only thing that was getting airplay was like the, the more negative uh, stuff. The stuff that was like, you know, calling women outside of their names and encouraging men to sell drugs, um, encouraging uh, men, men, to at, kill. men to kill each other, encouraging mm. men and women to abuse each other. Um, only speaking to each other with words of abuse. Um, so th there had to be something because then the other sort of more educated versions of music, the other more love-filled versions of music weren't getting coming to the surface in the same way. Now, I think people, there's a new generation now that's seeking their own um, energetic music. They're seeking... Um, they want more out of music and more out of life. And with because of how the internet works, you're able to find and seek the type of music that you like. But there's been such a long chunk of time where, you know, the type of material that, that promoted love, especially among black people, um, love and growth has definitely not been um, as present. So I, yeah, they're, they're somebody, somebody let it be that way, for sure. Let's come back to your career. Now, you're a very multi-talented person. So you're a singer, mm -hmm. you're an actor, you are a writer. Mm -hmm. um, which career gave you the biggest breakthrough first? Or let me say, which skill out of the different skill sets that you, that you possess? I would say, interestingly, um, with the musical theater that I was doing, I definitely had the most success and breakthrough that way. Um, as far as like being a pop singer or an R&B singer, I didn't have as big of a breakthrough. They were definitely singing in the theatrical context, singing um, in plays and musicals, definitely was my biggest breakthrough. Broadway, being on Broadway um, and being one of the uh, stars of Broadway, being in over 10 uh, Broadway productions was definitely my, my big breakthrough. And that's where I was most known was in New York. And being able to parlay that into the television and film world has been amazing because a lot of people want to, you know, typecast you and put you in a box. Once they know you can do one thing, it's hard for them to imagine that you could do something else, you know? Same me, I've always felt like people, when people box me, I always just want to get myself out of that box. When people Absolutely. say, you're just a DJ, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm more. You're just a TV presenter, nah, I'm more. You're just this, I'm more. Like, Absolutely. They, I cannot believe there's just so much in every human being that we can express our talents or our gifts in different ways. Absolutely. These are just distribution channels, Absolutely. but they come from one source where I feel people sometimes they limit themselves. 
Um, may the late great Dr. Miles Monroe's soul rest in peace. He said, when you go to your grave, you need to have poured out everything of, of yourself and mm. leave it here on earth mm. and feel, maybe now, now I can go. I've poured out everything. Mm. I've done everything. Mm. So mm. other people, there's, there's, there's parts where they want to try certain things, but they're always afraid. Like, what are people going to say? Yeah. Because maybe this is how my fan base sees me or this is how... Uh, this is how the market sees me or maybe mm -hmm. I'm gonna mess up with my bag you know mm -hmm. what I mean that's something that's interesting too for me right now because uh, playing this this uh, character set in the 60s this mom on the Wonder Years um, I'm, I'm sort of conscious about like man is my Instagram gonna like turn into 1960s Wonder Years I need to make sure that I have an effort of letting people see my other artistic endeavors you know I'm excited to get back going with my podcast Saycon Talks um, the fact that uh I was able to record music, record podcasts, produce calendars, you know, different things like that. It's something that I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And I always knew um, that sometimes you have to, you have to promote yourself. Not sometimes, all the time. I think people teach a, a high level of humbleness among entertainers, but the smart entertainer understands that you also have to be able to promote yourself. And, and you also, um, I, make, I make this comment all the time. I say, uh, J-Lo and, and P. Diddy, they make more money on blue jeans and, and beverages than they do on music. Say that again? They make more money on blue jeans and beverages than they do on music. Oh, I get you. Yeah, and people are like, what? Because I, I was telling a friend of mine just last week before I came here, I was telling a friend, um, you know, I had been studying e-commerce. I was like really interested in, um, in like, uh, perfumes and, and home decor and different products that I would love to um, present on the market. Things that I love. Tea. <laughs> I love tea. I love tea so much. Yes, I'm just so interested in promoting products and, and business and different things like that. I love performing, but I'm also extremely passionate about entrepreneurship. I'm just really passionate about it. And I was telling a friend, uh, that during the uh, pandemic, I was taking a marketing class. And it was like, what'd you do during the pandemic? I said, I took a marketing class and I would just, I would go live on YouTube. I would go live and I would just talk. I'd talk about my feelings, talk about my thoughts, talk about the herbs that I was drinking, what, how, what I was doing to nourish my body, to take care of my skin, uh, just in general, to strengthen myself, um, to fortify, my, fortify myself during the pandemic. And um, my friend was like, but, you don't want to quit the business, do you? And I said, no, no, I don't want to quit the business. But, but I also am passionate about those things. I have a mind to think and I enjoy, you know, some of my favorite podcasts that I listen to are like e economic and social podcasts. They're not just entertainment. And I do listen to a lot of gossip and all the same that people enjoy. But um, I've always had this sort of uh, entrepreneurial spirit, which is why you have inspired me so much. Um, I'm, I was so pleased to meet you and then learn about what you're doing and watch Mofaya, watch it growing and see how you, um, you know, go into communities and you're speaking so specifically about self-belief because that's a mantra. I think it, your mantra of self-belief and believing yourself, it replaces the mantra of, of negativity that we hear in some of the music and some of the entertainment, some of the violence, the lack of love you know, the promotion of love, all of that. So like to tie that in with uh, your products and, and I was telling you about the gear. I was like, the Mofaya jumpsuit, the Mofaya oh, jacket. Yeah. I was like, oh, I need, I need one of those. Like, <laughs> just like, just all of that, the branding. I just love branding. I love even just being here, at, you know, at, at the Black Brick, um, just seeing how they branded this particular hotel. Like, I love seeing how people come up with an aesthetic. You know, an aesthetic, like it's, it's something that I'm very interested in. Like there's a difference between like having a paper cup and having a cup, you yeah. know, like yeah. aesthetic, the vibe, the shape of your glasses, the necklace you chose, just the pieces, the clothing, the earring, the, just the choices that you make when you present yourself and present your, your thoughts and your ideas to your community. I really want to uh, promote the idea of uh, coziness, of wellness, of comfort, of health. That's something that I'm very passionate about because 
I've seen so many people in my own family, we work so hard as black people. We work ourselves to the bone, to the gristle. I mean, you know, and we don't stop and take the time to take baths, to nourish ourselves, to, to eat good food. You know, to me, that's like, it's very, it's something I'm very, very passionate about. I feel happiest when, if I have someone visiting my home and they just ate and they're sitting back drinking their tea and they're just, just content. I, I love that so much. I know um, there's a word, I think uh, it's called hygge. It's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. H-Y-G-G-E, what does that mean? It's hygge. It's, hygge, okay. Yeah, some people would call it the art of, uh, the art of cozy, the art of relaxation. It's a word you see, I think it might be, I, for, I don't want to say which country it's from. I'm forgetting which country it's from. But it's a word that, that, that presents the idea of coziness. So I was very um, inspired when I learned about the term hygge, the Danish word. It's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. Um, hygge, what does it mean? Hygge. So it, it, it's sort of uh, the definition of the art of comfort. The idea of coziness, comfort, um, and having your lifestyle be suitable for that and, and putting yourself in that vibe, enjoying the good, nourishing things in life. Um, and then I discovered uh, the word ataya, which in West Africa um, will have a similar meaning. Uh, some will specifically uh, attribute ataya to tea, like tea culture. And this was inspiring to me because Growing up in the States, we think of tea culture as being an English thing or a thing from you know, Asian countries, China, Japan, which I love English teas, I love Japanese tea. But this African rebus that I'm drinking right now <laughs> is so good. You know, the, you know, I enjoy the Indian chais and, and different um, just forms of, of nourishment. Like, we're not always, let me take a sip. No problem at all. <laughs> we're not always eating uh, heavy crazy foods sometimes you want to take some herbs put them in a, a nice decanter pour the hot water on them and let yourself take the, the energy that's infused from the herbs of the tea and so I don't know I just got super passionate about it I think all the years as a singer let's be real I sang a lot of songs I sang a lot of high notes people ask me how do you sing eight times a week on Broadway I'm singing eight times a week I'm drinking my tea and I'm nourishing myself, and I'm soaking my body. I'm soaking my body in, in uh, Epsom salt baths, which Epsom salt is, is also magnesium sulfate, which is, it replenishes the body. It gives you, um, uh, it helps to electrify your, your cells. And so just having that interest in like how to revitalize, having that interest in how to revitalize my cells, my cellular memory, my voice, my, just that self-care so that I can uh, remain energetic, youthful, and healthy is just something that I got extremely passionate about. That is so incredible that you're touching on your music career. And I don't think you've explored your music career that much outside no. of Broadway. No, I have not. Not enough. Not enough. W will you? I, I absolutely, it's something I absolutely want to do. And I'm so excited to have this platform of being on television and being in movies. Um, I recently was in a movie starring opposite... Uh, Jennifer Hudson and it was a movie about the life of Aretha Franklin at this point as an actress who sings I have touched Aretha Franklin's catalog uh, Bob Marley's catalog I played Rita Marley in a play we oh, did wow. called Marley um, the, the uh, Motown catalog when I did Motown the musical Tupac's catalog when I was rapping we did um, Holly if you hear me I've touched all these amazing um, catalogs of music as an artist, as an actress who sings. And now I'm really ready to, to promote my own amazing catalog of music. I put out an EP and a couple of singles here and there. I actually, um, I have a version of uh, Fela's Sorrow, Tears and Blood that I did uh, with DJ Serge Negri. Um, shout out to Serge Negri. And that was just some music I did here and there, but I'm, I'm really ready to um, do my own music and, and let myself be known for my own songs and not just for the music that I represented in some of these these plays and musicals. And of course, touching on the amazing uh, discography of Fela Kuti when I played Sandra Isidore on Broadway and also in Nigeria. Like, it's been amazing music. So if I could personally have a legacy or even 
even just be associated with a song, even if it's one song, um, I, I, I would love that. That would be amazing. I would love to make some music with you. Let's do it. I would definitely love to. Let's do it. You see how I'm scrum. I'm so jumping. we're getting it done on camera? We're going to make it done. Oh, Y'all saw it here. You saw oh, it here. You oh. saw it here. We're going to get I'm that done. I'm excited about it because so I've got a music career that uh, I did really well with my music career and I put it on hold. Mm -hmm. Let me not say I put it on hold. I think I evolved mm -hmm. and I started growing and mm -hmm. I evolved into writing books and becoming an entrepreneur. But now I kind of feel, um, you know, when something you love with all of your hearts and you've, I've just been a musician all of my life and I miss making music. Mm, so yeah. I've just recently started making more music. Again, yeah. yeah so I'm in, that, I'm in that zone. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you know how it is with music, you have to be inspired to make oh, music. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I'm currently inspired to You make have to music. be comfortable. You have to have your attire. You have to have your the things that make you feel energetic, that make you feel vibes. The yeah, vibes that yeah. create music, songs. You just have to be in the right place, the right energy, the right vibes. And so if it's coming down on you, then the music will come. I totally agree. And I, think, I think what's dope about you as well is that you're versatile. Because if you've touched on Fela's catalog, Bob Marley's catalog, um, Rita Ma Bob, um, um, sorry, Aretha Franklin, those types of people, mm -hmm. you have to, you have, clearly you have to be a versatile uh, musician or artist. Absolutely. If you were to record your own music, is there a certain particular genre or you're just one of those people, it doesn't matter as long as the music is good or Gosh. it depends on how you're inspired at that particular moment. Yeah, I would say it doesn't matter. And, and it's hard because um, I just took this quiz. You know, they have these quiz, these personality quizzes. And one, and one of the things that it said based off of my results, it was saying that I have so, such a variety of um, skills that when I to just sort of hone in on one might be difficult for me sometimes. And that's something that I, I would love to be known for a genre because I know that in general how people think, they want to know you for one thing. Um, but I also am, I love so many different styles of music, you know, like I've really been enjoying um, some of the newer artists uh, like Tim's, um, uh, older artists like Sade, newer artists like Somi who, who is a beautiful friend. Um, oh, you've just introduced me to Somi. Yes, I Thank just introduced you, you to Somi. Somi's Thank amazing. That's, she's, she's incredible. Incredible. One of the reasons I came here was to see her show. And, um, and you, you have to do her. You have to have her on your podcast oh, as well. Oh, we'll organize it? Yes. Oh, guys, yeah. we're going to have Somi yes, next. Oh, yes. She's so dope. Yeah, she, she did this huge concert here. And um, just witnessing her and all the artists that she performed with. Just I, do, you know, I, do you know that's cream of the crop in South Africa? Yes. Yes. I saw, I saw, I saw. And, I'm, and, I saw. and she took me to their house. She took me to, to, to spend time with them and, and to eat food, break bread with them. You know, it was amazing. Amazing. So, so guys, they were with Ndutuzo Makatini. They were with uh, Oprah Sipot, Sticks Mabuse. They were with um, King Ta. Ah, oh, the legendary Tandi. Yes. This Tandi Swamazwai. Yes. They were with, um, who else? Um, uh, you know, with all these great musicians. Sipo, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 and, yeah, and, 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 the, and these are people whose music is timeless. Yes. You spoke about Shade and yes. Tandiswa's music is like yes, that. And yes. Tandiswa would not release for like 10 years. And but like we, Shade is and, like that, But yeah. then we're waiting for her. Yes, yes. And Tandiswa releases an album Everybody's right like, now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So the fact that you guys are already mixing with that. Um, and then Tandiswa, they were singing. They introduced me to um, the artist that I, they were playing. Uh, Mshong. Is that... Oh, Mambu Simshong. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh rest I'm, in peace, Mama. Oh. I'm so ready to take a deep dive <laughs> on her music. We were at the house after Somi's big concert in, uh, at the State Theater in Pretoria, I think. Yeah. And they were playing this music and singing. I gotta po I'm gotta. i gonna post this on my Instagram because Somi recorded. They sing, everybody sing. What's it? Uh, uh, he plays the piano, thick beard. And Dutuza Makatini. Dutu, yeah, yeah. He's also top of the future. Yes, he played, he played on Somi's show as well. Like it was just, ugh, just ridiculous. But they were introducing me to artists who who just inspired them, you know? So if I could have some music that could have a long-standing sound like that would be amazing. Generally, when people see me in concert, you know, they'll hear a few of my original songs and then they'll also hear songs from 
my my catalog from my theater career. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to to really create my own sound and and have music that is timeless that people can enjoy and really see the fullness of me as an artist. I really admire those artists who do a little bit of everything, like Donald Glover, um, uh, like Most Def. Uh, I think he's known as now as Yasin Bey. Um, I really enjoy those artists who have a chance to present as actors, comedians, musicians, rappers, singers, poets, producers, designers. You know, you take someone like uh, Kanye West, who is though a very controversial figure as of late, you cannot deny that he has done what he wanted to do. And a lot of times when someone becomes the top in one particular genre, they don't want to see you or imagine you doing something else. Um, uh, Erica Badu, you know, I, she has all of this amazing music, but she her aesthetic is so specific and it's so very much her own, you know, just the the opportunity to do that with music as well, um, and and the the beauty business, all that. I'm I'm very interested in all of that. I like I like the fact that you you don't you don't box yourself too. You wanna you wanna express yourself through all these different channels, mm -hmm. and it's good because you are you are a talented um, person, yes. and I like that. What are you currently working on? So I am currently, um, so I'm excited. A movie I shot a while ago was finally, finally released online. It's called Double Play. Um, it was directed by Ernest Dickerson. Many of you know his work as a cinematographer alongside Spike Lee. Some of your favorite Spike Lee movies, he was a cinematographer for. And now he went on to direct movies like Juice with Tupac. Um, and he was just amazing. We shot this movie in the Dutch Caribbean on the island of Curacao. And I had to do this accent. It was amazing. Um, movie called Double Play, uh, and it's it's uh, it's an island thriller, very sexy movie. <laughs> so I did that movie, and then I'm also starring on The Wonder Years on ABC, um, playing the mom uh, Lillian. And on the show, I have three kids and a husband, and um, we are just going through all the things that a young kid growing up, going through adolescence. The, the uh, oldest son is uh, back and forth. He's in Vietnam. Um, the teenage daughter is, is dealing with uh, her interest in the Black Panther movement. It's a very interesting show, uh, very funny. I, I'm so excited. I can't wait for uh, South African audiences to see this show, uh, The Wonder Years. And it's a remake from a show that was on before, but now they've done it with an all-black family um, with our executive producer, Saladin Patterson. Fred Savage and Lee Daniels, who people famously know Lee Daniels for um, doing Power. Uh, Empire. Em I'm sorry. Empire. Lee Daniels for doing Empire. Sorry, 50 Cent. <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. No, it's okay. For doing Empire and also um, the amazing movie he just did about um, uh, Billy uh, Billy Holiday. Did an mm. amazing movie. It's called the. I think it's called the. The state, the people, the U.S. The US versus Billie Holiday, or something like that. I was just called the Billie Holiday movie. It's amazing, Star starring Andre Day, the the singer. Amazing. I'm I'm just so thrilled to be working with these amazing producers. Well, a lot of us have been affected by the pandemic. Life has evolved and changed. Mm -hmm. People in the arts and entertainment, we were affected like crazy. Mm -hmm. But we also got an opportunity to reflect, to learn a lot of things, to apply ourselves. And reset. And different things and reset, right? Yeah. But we also lost a lot of money. Man. Yes, yeah. Do I sound we like lost, a... We guys, lost money, I, we lost time. Guys, do I sound like I'm having a bit of an accent all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> I know my people are going to be mad at me. What's wrong with you all of an a sudden? An accent? What do you mean? No, I don't. No, I'm just joking. Oh, okay, okay, I'm saying, okay. As I'm speaking to you, oh, okay, okay. I, I was saying to my... They know. They'll comment on the comment section. Oh, I'm like, okay. oh, Smoo is starting to adopt an accent. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure I know I do. Everywhere I go, my accent starts to morph. I spent so much time in New York, and then I grew up down south, and then... When I'm around my Liberian people, oh, so I feel you. I feel yeah, you. No, I'm, I'm just throwing a joke there. Yeah. Like my brother Tibor Touch, you already know. Shout out to Fred Joy and Tibor Touch. It's just a, it's a local joke. You, you won't get it, but you'll see on the comment section when the, when the podcast is uh, out. Okay, what I was okay. trying to say is, how has the pandemic changed your life? Oh, man, the pandemic was the ultimate reset for me. I was in New York when it when it all went down. I we had just wrapped the movie, um, the. Uh, Aretha Franklin movie. We had just wrapped that movie, uh, Respect. 
and maybe like not even two weeks later they shut the world down and being in New York at the time I had previously had a feeling that I wanted to uh, leave and be in a different area live in a different area so I made a decision to up and move I, I put myself in storage after several months of craziness the craziness of that era craziness I just decided to move. I didn't even really explain fully to my family what I was doing. Um, and I was researching. I was researching different cities that had, that were on the come up. And I ended up, uh, uh, I had a list of cities. There's a, there's a, uh, an, there's a YouTube channel that I love. It's called, um, what is it called? The Black Excel List. Not ex excellent, Excel List. So the Black Excel List. I was watching these videos on black excel list they would give you like they'd be like top black cities for education top black cities for entrepreneurs top black cities for love top black cities for you know and it was giving all this information i was like i need to go to one of those cities not to say that new york wasn't the city but i said hey let me see how i can be a bigger fish in a smaller pond i wanted to change you know and recalibrate how i was living my life i wanted to be around more nature you know, see more flowers, more, you know, I just didn't want to be in the concrete jungle anymore. And um, so I up and moved. I, I ended up going to Charlotte, North Carolina, which I believe is where Michael Jordan is from. I know a lot of famous uh, basketball players come from that town. I was researching. I saw they were starting a new soccer team and stadium and, and all these new businesses, banks and different things are there. And I was like, they are doing some amazing things in uh, this city. I would love to be on the ground up, you know, as this city is growing. And so I moved to Charlotte and uh, probably like three months later, I ended up booking a TV show there. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> I was there, I was studying, uh, kind of focusing on my entrepreneurial um, thoughts, starting a music entertainment company. And, and a lot of my in between all the razzle dazzle, I was seeing at events, at galas, weddings, corporate events, different things like that. And so I myself and I've seen several of my friends um have like uh they have these wedding bands and different companies where they would provide bands. And I used to work for a company that had everything. They had fire swallowers, sword swallowers, dancers, singers, gospel band, um jazz quartet, string ensemble, whatever type of entertainment you needed. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to build my entertainment business and provide live music for some of these events. And who knew I was going to end up on, on a show on the Oprah Winfrey Network called Delilah. So I ended up doing, <laughs> I ended up, and just by chance of posting a product that I was, I was promoting, I posted this post and I tagged Charlotte and a director I worked with years ago called me and said, you're in Charlotte? I said, yeah. He said, audition for my show. So I ended up getting on a show, um, having an audition that, you know, I would not have had had I not focused on my passion, which was this entrepreneurship. So the pandemic started off really, really rough. And it was the first half was very rough for me as it was for many people. We lost a lot of people. Um, God bless the people that we lost. But um, personally, I was able to uh, transmute a lot of the, the bad things and like just make a, a pivot and, and change my life. And, and I do believe if I hadn't have uh, made that change, I may not have been in the right place or had the right environment to have me performing my best to get the role on The Wonder Years. And what keeps you going? What inspires you? What is your, what is your why? What is that big why that keeps Say Kong going? By the way, her, her last name, guys, the G is silent, right? So it's Semblo instead of Senglo. Yeah. <laughs> what, ke what keeps Miss Senglo going? Senglo going? That's a good question. You know, every day I, I'm, I'm seeking something to inspire me and keep me going every day. Um, I am not always inspired. I love this outfit. Oh, thank Fashion. you. Love it. Um, I am not always inspired. I am not always... Um, I am not always feeling like I can rule the world. So I, I tend to find happiness in other success. Um, and this is always, I think it's so interesting because people have always said to me, why are you so happy? She's, you know, like Somi, Somi's doing her thing, right? 
you you're so happy your friend is doing you know one of my other friends is on a show um called snowfall i get i have it's like i have to see it happening i have to see your success i have to see somi's success I have to see my friend Christine's success. I have and, and, to. And, sorry to disturb. Yeah. When we met, you were also taught the same thing. Really? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying well, around the time we met, mm -hmm. you were saying the same thing about Lupita. Lupita. Yeah, I have to see it. You know, like, I think sometimes people get, you feel like, um, it's not good when you wish down on other people's success. It's a bad energy. It creates more bad energy. You have to receive inspiration from other people's success. You have to see it. So, oh, I can do that? Oh, I can do that? You know what I'm saying? So I tend to get my inspiration from literal examples of people doing things. The kid on my show, he's... It's okay, we can... Hey, so me is here. No, there's so me. Ah, guys, she's here. Oh my God. <laughs> she's hello. like, oh, hello. Say hello. There's Somi, everybody. We we're just talking about you. I know, Somi and I, we're going, we're going to the market as soon as we finish this, uh, okay. this interview. So nice. you're checking in to see. So she's, yeah, yeah. she's just committed you on camera that yes. the next podcast is you. You're going to hey, do you. Yes. Yes. We, <laughs> talk, we talked you up. We talked you up. Give me a few more minutes. Um, so the thing I want to say about this, this particular book that I'm listening to, I don't watch that show. I had no interest in that show. There's no reason in my mind why I would ever read that book. It's called Miss Me With That. Until it was recommended. And when I started listening to that book, it was amazing. Because, you know, we talk about boxing people in. This young lady, whether she was going to be on The Bachelor or not, she um, comes from a very strong black family. And she has had this experience of have, being an educated black woman coming from... A, being an educated black woman coming from a strong black family and living in a neighborhood where other black kids would make fun of her for using great English, for being well raised. And just hearing her story about how she managed loving black people and loving her culture so much and then feeling uh, rejected. And I think that's a lot of people's story uh, I want to always encourage education and encourage excellence. Like that, 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 uh, that channel I watched, the Black Excel List. Like I want to encourage excellence. And this book, it's called Miss Me With That. It's like, she's just like, miss me with that downplaying, miss me with that trying to pretend to be ignorant, miss me with that um, constantly, uh, you're just downplaying who you are and not understanding that we as black people are greatness like we should not associate ourselves with 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 terror terribleness with badness with whackness you know the book is amazing i i would not was not expecting it to be like that at all and um it's been really really good also um cicely tyson's uh book god bless her god rest her soul i'm listening to her audio book as well and she's just talking about her life as an actress um, growing up in the Caribbean and in America and just the experience. She has some crazy experiences. Whew. Man, we think we go through stuff now. Like, imagine being in the entertainment industry during in that era. She has some experiences. So, yeah. That is incredible. Guys, check out also um, Florence's, Florence Scoville Shin's The Game of Life and How to Play It. Awesome, totally remarkable book. I'd recommend mm. that. And obviously, I'd recommend my books. <laughs> Absolutely, of course, of course. So Do you gonna, have an audio book of this yet? Um, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I've okay. got audio books of these. This one is called Billionaires Under Construction. I've got two others. Um, I need to read. I need to read your book. Actually, what's nice is I've actually put up one on YouTube. You can okay. just go click on YouTube. The Art of Hustling. Okay. Sell or surrender. Okay. I, I, even if I have to say so myself, that's a dope book. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I recommend it. So I love writing books. I'm currently writing my fourth book. I thought I was going to put it out actually early this year. Mm -hmm. But my music inspiration took off. Of course. So, so with me every year, 
music tech takes over or broadcasting or entrepreneurship or so i've got all these different cycles where yeah. i tap into my different talents based on the timing at the time yeah so yeah. i thought i was going to put out the book first this year before i, I go but the to music, vibe was but the music took over yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the music yeah, yeah i'll probably put out the book later on in the year or maybe early next year mm -hmm. but uh what's nice about being multi-talented you can always tap into these different skills whenever you feel like it because you've got an abundance of it you've been blessed with it right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so, um, i love that yeah I, I love that too being multi-talented go check out another interview podcast interview guys we did with robot boy Umzi, in he's also one of those um young up-and-coming amazing um entertainers in south africa he does a lot of things he's a drama he's a dancer he's a comedian mm -hmm. he's a rapper he's doing a piano now he does a lot of philanthropy work. He does a lot of church work. piano. I want to do some of that. Also, do you know anything about Ama Piano? I mean, I've been enjoying the music. I've just been enjoying the vibes. You so know, did, you, like, did you hear about Mapiano here, or have you been listening to Mapiano? In the states, season? in okay. the states, yeah. Like honestly, um, African music from from uh, West Africa, South Africa, East Africa. I don't. I can't. I haven't. I don't know about North, but there's been so much amazing music that's been coming out, um, and yeah, it's a vibe. Ooh, it's, it's a vibe. It's such a vibe. You yeah. know, when I, when I just heard that two of our local, uh, some of our biggest local Ama Piano X are performing at Coachella. Ooh. Yes. So I'm going there to go support yes, them. I'm going to yeah. go buy a big South African flag. I want to go to Coachella. Um, I was like, this year I might actually be able to go. Maybe I can work <laughs> it out. Yeah, you better do it. You're going to so, be out there like. Ah. Yeah, no, of course. I, I've been there with, with coffee. But now going to support Major Black League Coffee, who you introduced me to as well when we were in the studio. I remember we went to the studio and I was like, is that Akon that in was the studio? Dope. I was oh, like, what is Akon? my life? With Akon, Akon was, was in the studio. With coffee. And Black Coffee. And then we went to his show. And then we went to their show. I was like, that what was is my life? <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Like, I, you could not, I, yeah, I could not write that. And I remember I was on the elevator because I told Akon, I was like, I usually tell people, Akon, like Akon, that's how I tell people my name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. just, I think he's, he, you know, he's just on the elevator. But I was like, oh my God, Akon. And, then yeah. sh and shout out to my brother Coffee. Yeah, yeah. Coffee, you always show us love wherever we are, and it, it doesn't matter whether you're friends and or he, us in the industry or any ordinary South African. But what Coffee does, does, he does so great boy. interviews too. His interviews are great. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. But what I want to say to Coffee, if he's watching, is. Thank you for letting us into your world every time, whenever we're with you. Whether it's in Ibiza, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in America, Coffee always invites South Africans to his mm. backstage environment. He's what an amazing human being. He deserves all of the success I that hope he's I, getting. I hope he remembers me. I want to meet him again. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll introduce amazing. you. Yeah. That was so amazing, his show. Oh, it was so good. That was fun. And he oh went on God. that night. Yeah, I think it was like yes. four or five hours. Yeah, it, it was amazing. In. Amazing. I think like in Brooklyn or something. That was a few years ago. I had so much fun. I yeah. think that was before the pandemic. Yes. Yeah, it was before the pandemic. So we're talking about I'm a piano. I yes. about I'm a piano. Tell me about some of the art. Okay, maybe. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not good with artists. I'm not good okay. with even Okay. American artist. Maybe is there a song or two? Or is it a song that you'd recognize if you hear them? No, no, I'm not, I'm oh, okay. not good with naming. But you just like I the just, vibe. that's a vibe. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So big up to my piano artists. Guys, make more music. People are loving your music all over the world. Yes, absolutely. It's an absolutely. incredible thing. Yeah. And guys, anybody that kind of feels. Yeah, I think you should do some of my piano music. <laughs> I know you like. I was telling him that he's like, no, no, I don't think my fan base. I'm like. I'm an OG man. I make I make house music. That's I love, some good music though. I love my type of music. Of course, of course. But I, I love I love it when young people are writing their own history with their own sound. Mm -hmm. And I don't also want to be that person that is writing on the, the current. Absolutely, the coattails of. Yeah. yeah I think I'm good at what I do, and I'm blessed in my own space. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to be doing um, what I, what my soul, you know, the, I just don't want to do things just because I'm trying to get clout, I'm trying to get a top 10 single. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I just want to do what I love. But it's good though too. So I know, yeah. no, I know, but I feel you, I, I feel know, you. Look at you, look at you. I love it. You know I you want to do it, you know. It's because I come from the era, I know I feel like doing it sometimes, because <laughs> I'm a musician, right? Yes, of course. I come from the era of Kwaito music. Kwaito mm. music is, well, according to myself, my personal opinion is what? Kwaito. Kwaito, okay. Kwaito. Kwaito. Mm. What my piano, what I believe, what my piano is, is what Kwaito was then. Mm. But I believe Kwaito has evolved into what my piano is today. Mm. But I just love being that big homie who sits back and just watch the guys. Enjoy, do it. yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm, 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 oh, I love my piano. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Um, what else did I want to talk about before I let you go? I know you gotta go. I know I gotta go. Well, what are some places that you visited? I know your, your, your visit hasn't been that long. No, it's been a short, just a week here. But um, I went to Pretoria. I went to Soweto. That was amazing. My time in Soweto. Um, gosh, I really enjoyed that. Um, and just uh, just I toured all around Johannesburg yesterday. Um, I did the touristy thing. I took like a, a bus, like the tour bus. The open bus? Yes. But what's crazy, um, I was telling Somi this, a lot of people, like local people were on the bus. Like South Africans who live here were on the bus. Like it was like dates. Like people were on dates on the tour bus. I was like, oh, that's what people do? Because they stop at the la uh, lake. What is this lake? Zoo Lake. Zoo Lake. And the people sitting on, on the lake on the boat kissing. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, South Africa, that's how y'all do? I mean, it was very romantic, very beautiful, beautiful city. Um, been to some amazing restaurants. I can never remember the names of anything. I've been to some rooftops, um, at least several rooftops, had dinner um, at King Ta, King Ta made fish. King Ta, that's, that's, that's the great Tandy Swam as well. I'm wife. like, yeah. she's like, oh, my fish. I'm like, it was melting my mouth. Like, just amazing experiences. Tandy Swam cooked for you. Do you yes. Does she understand, I, though? I don't understand. Like, it's it was a, so, I was just like, <laughs> like, I'm just having such an amazing experience here, amazing time here. And I thank you so much for your hospitality and welcoming me here. Um, South Africa has been very good to me, and I will be returning for sure. I'll definitely be back sooner than you think. I'm so proud of you. May the good Lord continue to bless you. I think this is just the first interview. She has to come back, guys. Yes, absolutely. Um, the next time when we connect, we're going to recap on some of the things that you would have achieved at the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad this has had this happened in South Africa. Yes, yes. Because we actually did this podcast We did it before York. in New York. And, and we the didn't... content got messed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, happy it ha I'm glad it happened in South Africa. And it rained. Yes. And you got I hope y'all can hear us. I know. I'm so such <laughs> it's a... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I hope that everybody could hear us well um, through the rain, through everything. It's so nice um, to just sit here and have tea with you. Thank you, ma'am. Your last words to the people out there and just some words of inspiration to our young audiences who've got dreams with their own lives as well. The thing I would say to young people and older people as well, I almost would really even say, especially to older people, is uh, don't give up. You can always reinvent yourself. You can always recreate your life. You can always start over. Um, when I left New York during the pandemic, I decided to leave. I decided to, I decided to treat myself like I was 19 again and make some uh, choices. And sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to restart. And you can't tell everybody uh, what you're in game is because everybody won't understand people don't always understand why you do what you do um but make a choice of some type to put yourself in the place that you want to be and it's okay to sacrifice a little bit in order to win win and win and win later so that's it i'm Seikan simpler miss Seika, thank you thank you god bless you thank you god guys bless you, want, you as well thank i receive all of those blessings yeah. My name is Busisa, so I'm blessed to become a blessing. I'm full of blessings, so thank you, ma'am.